so um, I'm, I'm honored to have the, the privilege of talking to you a little bit about some of, some of the work that we're just uh, kind of getting off the ground at Indiana, um, looking at the concurrent uh, age-related age macular degeneration and, and open angle glaucoma when they occur in the same patient. And, and we've started by looking at the co-prevalence and then um, uh, plan to, to take it from there. So uh, just a brief overview of the talk today. Uh, an introduction to the diseases and sort of what they mean, um, uh, and and then uh, the the meat of the talk will be uh, the prevalence of concurrent uh, open angle glaucoma and macular degeneration, and then finally just a little conclusion and some future directions where we plan to take the project in the next couple of years. Um, both macular degeneration and glaucoma are significant uh, causes of of low vision and blindness in the United States. Um, in whites, particularly, <coughs> uh, macular degeneration plays a very large role. Uh, about a quarter uh, of cases of low vision, and it accounts for about, or for more than half of cases of blindness. Um, about 14% uh, in both low vision cases and, and blindness in the Hispanic populations. Uh, glaucoma plays a little bit larger role, uh, particularly in blindness in Hispanic persons. Um, but also fairly significant uh, piece of the pie uh, of low vision and blindness uh, in whites. As you can, as you can imagine, uh, low vision and blindness is a major cause of disability. I was a little surprised to see that it ranks in the top 10, however, um, for, the, for disability in, in uh, US adults. Uh, and really, after you get past the first three, uh, arthritis, back and spine problems, and heart problems, uh, the rest of the top 10 is pretty comparable. Uh, blind, uh, blindness and vision problems comes in number nine, but really uh, there's not much difference between the number four and number 10 spots. Um, also causes a lot of, uh, there's a lot of vision related quality of life issues. Um, this is a little bit busy, uh, this slide here, but if we look at the composite score for a quality of life uh, measure, uh, bilateral moderate to severe vision loss compared with no vision loss causes a very significant effect size. So um, typically the, the convention is to say a, an effect size of about 0.8 is considered to be a large effect. Um, this is all the way up to, to more than one and a half, uh, which is very, very significant. Um, and even in bilateral mild vision loss or unilateral moderate to severe, moderate to severe causes or, or has a, a moderate effect size of about 0.5. Um, that same pattern can be seen basically across the board with the exceptions of general health uh, and ocular pain, which is not really terribly surprising. But uh, the point here is that, that these vision-related issues, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and others uh, really do impede people's lives. Driving, you can see, has an enormous effect size, uh, which is, again, not terribly unexpected. Um, this 2005 survey of uh, the public knowledge attitudes and practices related to eye health and disease was, uh, was very interesting to me. Um, it was a very large survey done. Um, they probed a lot of different areas of, uh, of vision-related health. They asked this question about um, to adults um, uh, to think about certain conditions that would affect their day-to-day -day living, and 71% of them responded that the loss of eyesight would be a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 indicating the greatest impact. So obviously people, uh, I think fear is probably not an inappropriate word, uh, fear loss of vision. Um, surprisingly though, the, the subsequent questioning revealed that in some cases they don't know an awful lot about it. So with glaucoma, most people were familiar with with glaucoma, they responded correctly that um, glaucoma can cause vision loss. Fewer correct responses, more uh, unsure responses that vision loss could be prevented. But I think this one is really striking, that there are no early warning symptoms with glaucoma. Two-thirds of the respondents uh, answered incorrectly there, showing that there's really a lot of education uh, that, could be, that could be done. Macular degeneration, uh, there's no, no similar uh, sort of big red bars indicating in incorrect responses, but overall the correct responses related to macular degeneration were fewer, down to as low as 
um, that it's hereditary. Um, and I think this just highlights the need to, um, to educate the public about these diseases and what to look for and how to, how to prevent uh, vision loss. So why study macular degeneration and uh, open angle glaucoma together? Um, classic sign of, of glaucoma is ganglion cell layer neuron loss. Um, but some work from Maderos uh, and Sercio uh, showed that a 47% loss of GCL neurons in exudative macular degeneration. Um, they didn't find any such um, uh, GCL neuron loss in non-exudative now, I don't think this is necessarily speaks to um, these, these diseases being um, uh, closely linked or, or dependent on one another, but I do think that it, it raises the question, at least, of is there a, a similar process going on, especially in exudative AMD, uh, that, that may have, uh, that may be related to some of the processes uh, going on in, in glaucoma. Um, another study found optic disc changes that were associated particularly with uh, larger extents of macular degeneration. Uh, but, but the literature is not completely clear on these issues. There have been, there have been a couple of studies particularly uh, with um, optic disc appearance that found no relationship between um, macular degeneration, the extent of the macular degeneration, uh, or the type. Uh, and optic disc appearance. <coughs> so we started our project um, using uh, data from the Beaver Dam Eye Study, uh, which is focused most, which included mostly uh, whites, and from the Los Angeles Latino Eye Study, uh, which included mostly Hispanics. Um, these data for prevalence of glaucoma and macular degeneration have been published previously in these individual studies. Uh, and these are just the definitions of glaucoma and macular degeneration. Uh, rather than go point by point through this, uh, I think the, the take home is uh, that these studies are very comparable. They use very similar definitions um, and their reading center was actually, they used the same reading center for all of their photographs, uh, allowing I think for, for better comparison between these two studies and the prevalence estimates that they get than maybe for other studies that, that don't have, that don't share those same similarities. Uh, from those studies, <coughs> we see that, um, that the prevalence of open angle glaucoma increases with age. Uh, about 20% of Hispanics over the age of 80 are affected with open angle glaucoma, and about 10% of whites uh, over the age of 80. Macular degeneration is similarly an age-related disease. Um, uh, almost 40% of whites over the age of 80 are affected with macular degeneration, with early macular degeneration. Uh, and uh, again, about a quarter of Hispanics. The number, the overall prevalence is much lower in late macular degeneration, but it's still between five and 10% and, and represents, I think, a significant um, a significant number because of the, the, uh, the vision loss that's associated with, uh, with late macular degeneration. <coughs> so we took those numbers from, the, from those studies uh, to look at the prevalence of concurrent uh, open angle glaucoma and macular degeneration. Uh, as is expected, uh, the overall numbers uh, are much lower, but interestingly, there seems to be not much difference between the prevalence of concurrent disease in, in whites and Hispanics. So um, early macular degeneration and open, open angle glaucoma, about 6% of individuals over 80, uh, and about 2% uh, for open angle glaucoma and late macular degeneration. Um, with those numbers, we, we then wanted to ask sort of what does the future hold? The prevalence can be affected, and there's actually some studies that have shown the prevalence of particularly macular degeneration may be decreasing, but um, assuming that those, that, that those co-prevalence numbers hold steady, as the population ages, ages, we would expect that the number of cases, the total number of cases would increase. So to get sort of an idea of how much, we, we took the 2008 U.S. Census Bureau information uh, with standard, standard um, 
estimates of immigration, immigration rates, uh, to estimate the total number of cases through 2050. Um, if we start in, two, in 2015, about 1.3 million uh, white people are expected to be affected with both open-ended glaucoma and uh, macular degeneration. The number's about a tenth of that in the Hispanic population, um, 170,000 cases in 2015. But what's really striking is over the next 40 years uh, in, in whites, the number is expected to increase by about, uh, maybe this is on, by about 50%, um, which is significant, but not nearly to the extent that we see in Hispanics, where the, the percent increase in the number of cases uh, is expected to, to be about 350%, representing a much, a much larger uh, increase in the burden in, in the Hispanic population than in, than in whites. Um, so conclusions from our, from our studies so far. Um, up to 8% of, of individuals over the age of 80 uh, are affected with both open angle glaucoma and macular degeneration. And the number of cases uh, is, the total number of cases is, is expected to increase over the next uh, few decades as the population ages. I think it really highlights the importance of, of education, but culturally appropriate education, um, so that, that uh, individuals are aware of, of the diseases, uh, that they exist, their symptoms or lack thereof, uh, which I think is particularly important based on the survey data that we have, uh, as well as the potential for treatment and prevention of vision loss if, if uh, proper um, treatment is sought. Uh, just very briefly, our future, where we're going with in the, uh, in the future, we really want to explore this question of um, the independence of um, open angle glaucoma and macular degeneration. The data, uh, the, the assumption so far has been that they are independent and the data uh, are not overwhelmingly against that hypothesis, but we want to take a closer look using the, uh, the Beaver Dam Eye Study and the, uh, and the Los Angeles Latino Eye Study data. We also hope to be able to identify risk factors for concurrent disease. We have, I think, a pretty good idea of risk factors for each of the diseases independently, but we want to take a closer look at individuals who have concurrent disease. Uh, and then we also plan to take a closer look at these glaucoma-like changes uh, that occur in macular degeneration in our own sample of patients. And finally, we hope to, to contribute something to management in, in developing plans um, to take care of individuals who have uh, both glaucoma and macular degeneration. This can be a particular problem as they're typically seen by, uh, by two different people. Uh, central vision loss can affect uh, following glaucoma uh, the visual field, the difficulty fixating centrally, things like that. So there's a lot of issues to be, to be worked out that way. Um, list of references for the talk, and then just want to acknowledge um, Lynn Rossette, who I've been working with most closely on this project in Indiana, as well as all the individuals involved with the Beaver Dam Eye Study, uh, Los Angeles Latino Eye Study, and then Dr. Weinreich uh, at UCSD, who's, uh, who's Lynn's mentor and has provided a lot of uh, guidance in the project. Uh, thank you. And Yeah, so the, the definition of glaucoma pr specifically excluded ocular hypertensive without um, signs of disease. Um, so the most, uh, the, the important changes, optic disc appearance, uh, nerve fiber layer loss, um, uh, go back, I can't remember, I think there was one more that I'm not. Uh, intraocular pressure was considered, but it was not it was not sufficient for a diagnosis by itself. It had to be, it had to occur uh, in conjunction with one of the other things. Um, uh, visual acuity loss is what I was thinking. 
So strict ocular hypertensives without any other manifestations of the disease were not included in the glaucoma numbers. Certainly, I think it's a very good idea to include those and uh, at least to look at, at the overlap. Okay, thank you very much.